What's up, y'all? Thanks for tuning in, checking it out. We're doing some uh, some we're sh some vermiculturing. What do you call it? We're we're composting with worms. The way I'm doing it today, there's so many different ways you can feed things to worms. I'm doing it with old mushroom substrate that I've actually put in this big tub right here, and then uh, put layered a bunch of like worm castings in there. And, uh, and then, you know, use my little air pump here to be delivering an air and essentially doing like a compost tea, but with a bunch of substrates, so old mushroom blocks. The idea being that I'm inoculating that, those old um, mushroom blocks, those mycelium blocks with a bacteria that the worms like and softening it up, tenderizing it, and making a nice, hopefully bacteria-laden, um, carbon-rich, deliciousness for the worms that is a plan i started doing this a long time ago um because i was under the impression that worms couldn't handle the mycelium they couldn't handle the acids and the and the enzymes released by mushrooms but i've come to realize that that is not the case but i kind of like doing it because yeah it gives it a really bacteria rich environment this particular round i'm actually going to do the bacteria rich substrate and then i'm going to use some of these mycelium blocks that didn't quite pan out these are patty straw mushrooms uh, i was just too cold for them they didn't really like it and they kind of stalled and I don't know what happened to them. They still smell fresh, but I'm gonna kind of lace the mycelium in with the bacteria rich and make a cool kind of smorgasbord of deliciousness for the worms. Um, worms, a lot of people don't realize, but a lot of people feed them kitchen scraps, which is great, but um, they don't eat the actual food or it's really hard for them to eat the actual food because worms don't have teeth, right? Have you looked in there? They don't have teeth, right? I know sometimes those little cartoons have, have teeth on the worms, they don't have teeth, all right? But they do have a gizzard, right? So they, they kind of break down a lazy worms food is mycelium, um, bacteria, I believe they like mold as well. They like that kind of stuff. So they need in those kitchen scraps for the mold and the bacteria and the mycelium to break down that food. Now, I believe they get a little food when they kind of go in there, but it's mostly they're looking for the, for the bacteria. So, um, well, yes, it works for, to put kitchen scraps. It's actually better to feed your kitchen scraps to say like uh, black soldier fly grubs. Check out a hopefully soon to come video about black soldier fly grub and then those soldier fly grubs, they are voracious and they eat that food. And then they create this kind of muck that isn't quite castings yet, but it's perfect for the worms. So that's something to give to worms. In this particular round, I'm not gonna do any food scraps. There's no kitchen scraps going into this. It's just the bacteria, hopefully bacteria laden old substrate blocks combined with some mycelium blocks laced through. I'm gonna put a few blocks just in there out of curiosity to see if they'll just penetrate the block. I'm just curious. Um, and I'll probably break up a few and do like some islands of mycelium to kind of give them a, a you know, uh, a, a varied diet, right? Also, because they don't have teeth, they have a gizzard. And so it's nice to get some grit in there. So I got some, you know, we used to put, like we eat a lot of eggs. I used to put the eggshells in with our compost, but then we just wind up with these big chunks of eggshells in our compost. So now I've been separating it and been like pounding it out um, to hopefully get it as fine as I can. I haven't quite dialed in that setup. I use this combined with the sand to dial it in. Sand is really good on its own to provide the grit. My kind of thought behind the eggshells is it'll help provide calcium because hopefully down the line, I want to feed these worms to chickens, right? Once I have a plentiful amount, a, uh, a plethora. Um, and the chickens need the calcium to make the eggshells, right? And so we'll see, we'll see how we can loop this around. And uh, yeah, so those are what's gonna go on in here. Basically this big bin is just a big bin. I've got holes in the side. This was from an old experiment of making like a paneling out of mycelium, which I haven't given up on, but I decided to use the same plywood, which already had the holes in it for the worm bins because um, they need air in there. So that's perfect. And so, yeah, basically, I'm just going to kind of mix all this grit, sand, eggshells in with the bacteria, in with the mycelium, and then put the delicious worms. So I'm going to give them this one round and I'll probably let them rip through it over. It's going to be a lot of material. I'm going to let them rip through it for six weeks. And hopefully in that six weeks, my worm population will double. And at that point, I'll move all the substrate to one side and then put a whole fresh round, hopefully moving them over and then have some nice worm castings. So now we're gonna start adding the stuff, adding the gunk. So I'm gonna get these rocks out of here. Here's some of the top gunk. So you can see that's like a good carbon basis. It's kind of 
laden with some bacteria. It's going to be awesome. These worms are going to be so happy. They're going to be like, thanks, Talbot. Thanks for having me here. This is fun. I'm just so happy to make you delicious worm castings. And, you know, like my offspring, once we've populated so much, I'm okay if, you know, spread the love, feed them to, us, to some chickens. That would be cool with us. You know, it's all, it's the circle of life. It's not just about one species, or is it? Cool. Look at this. It's already pretty well broken down. Um, but this is what I'm talking about. You can see some mycelium in there. So it's well on its way. I did have worms in this substrate before. This was one of the substrates that I had on. So like, but they just, uh, I was gone for a long time and it dried out. You can, I've had luck making this kind of substrate last for months um, without added substrate or water. But after a while, the worms are just cruising around their own poop and urine and they can't eat their own castings, you know? So it's obviously it's good to give them a fresh round of stuff. Just gonna mix the mycelium straight in. I mean, this, I'm looking at it now that's been inoculated, like a lot of this is pretty well broken down and we'll see what they think. But with this mycelium and wood chips, it gives them some fresh material. I'm just gonna monitor them, make sure they're happy. This is one of many experiments we'll be doing with the wormies. Mycelium, bacteria, sand, eggshells, it's all mixed in there. There's some guys. So now we're just gonna put these beautiful creatures on top. So these, this stuff was, this was old black soldier fly grub compost. And they've been ripping through it pretty good. Whoa. I'm just gonna lay it right on top and let them work their way down. Oh yeah. Oh beauties. I think they're gonna really like this stuff. This old substrate was super wet, I think wetter than they would have liked. So I'm gonna let this go for six weeks. I will check on them periodically, but in theory, my goal is for this bin to just be like a multiplier to like make a ton of worms to breed them and then expand them into other zones and other experiments um, and just, yeah, really just crank it out. So we'll see. I'm excited. We'll check back in. We'll keep posting on this. Um, but this is a nice start. This is, you know, worms are super exciting to me. This is a huge amount of substrate. Um, these little tubes definitely might help provide air, um, but we'll see. It probably wouldn't have hurt to have bigger chunks of stuff in here to get more air, but they'll, they'll find their way around. We'll see, I'm a rook, you know, disclaimer, I'm a rook, but I, I got a little experience in my belt. So we'll check this out, we'll see how this goes. Um, thanks for tuning in, until next time, ciao.